We're talking about the major FBI scandals, the incompetence of Comey and the tempest in a teapot that is being ginned up by the uh, radical left. We have with us one of the great senators of all time and a, a huge, huge, huge uh, 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 man in many ways, Senator Rand Paul, Republican from Kentucky, to join us now on the Savage Nation. Senator Paul, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, Michael, thanks for having me. This is a big story, but is there anything you, Senator, know of that has any merit in the Trump-Russia collusion investigation? You know, I haven't seen any, and I think it's mostly sort of founded upon uh, unhappiness with the election. There's still, you know, many people crying and weeping. The Democrats are gnashing their teeth, and so what they do is they say, what can we possibly do to occupy our time? We have no ideas. We have no way to fix the country. Why don't we find something we can latch on to and complain about? And that's what this Russia thing is. And so they will go on and on trying to prove something uh, for which there's never been any evidence uh, put in play. But really, they, they're trying to distort the facts, too. I, I told somebody earlier that the hypocrisy is thick enough to cut with a knife. Um, they were all for getting rid of Comey. They were for getting rid of Comey until we finally got rid of Comey. So it's a little bit crazy. Well, this whole Russia thing is very interesting to me because... Even if there was a hacking, even if there was a, ha a hacking, we learned way back when that all they may have hacked was the DNC's mail server, email server, and pro provide the infamous Podesta emails to WikiLeaks. There was absolutely no mention that a single vote for Hillary or Trump was added or subtracted. Isn't that true, Senator Paul? Well, you know, in my state, Trump got close to 75% up in Appalachia, where we've had people out of work because of the war on coal. And uh, the Democrats have devastated a whole region, both on the West Virginia side and on the Kentucky side. Not one of them voted for Donald Trump having anything to do with Russia, Russia hacking, or anybody's influence on the election. They voted for him because he promised to get rid of the regulations that were killing their jobs. And um, so I think really it's an excuse for Democrats. They need an excuse for why they lost. Mm. Well, let's talk about possible surveillance by the Obama administration, which I know is a topic dear to your heart. How did you find out that the Obama administration may have been surveying you? We've had uh, calls from at least two reporters who claim they have multiple reliable sources. And so I can't tell you you know, with certainty that they did this, but I'm concerned enough that two separate reporters have come up. I also know of one other senator who now has verification that he was spied upon. Mm. And so, yes, I am very concerned that it could happen. But I'm also concerned not just for my sake. I'm not too worried about my sake, um, but I'm worried about America in general, that mm. millions of Americans could be caught up. I'm worried that they took someone like General Flynn, and whether you like him or don't like him, what they did was illegal, and they destroyed a man. And mm. put that in the context of what Chuck Schumer said a couple weeks ago when he said, don't mess. He said, Trump needs to be warned not to mess with the CIA because they can tear you every six ways to Sunday. Whatever. <laughs> I opened my show with that quote. Believe me, I know it. But when, when Schumer says this, you have to realize that in Congress, only eight people know anything up here about intelligence. And not, unfortunately, I'm not one of the eight that gets to know. But eight people know what's going on, and they're told only what the intelligence community chooses to tell them. The intelligence communities have enormous power. And if they can take down a General Flynn by listening to his phone calls and then finding out if he had made a contradiction to someone and then hoisting him on his own petard, what can they do to an average person? What could they do to somebody that they decided to destroy? Uh, the power is alarming, and we have to get more congressional oversight of what's going on. And no American should have their name queried or searched in any kind of database without asking a judge for a warrant. Senator Paul, should, in your opinion, a special prosecutor be appointed to investigate the possible surveillance crimes of the Obama administration? You know, the thing is, is that this is why we probably need someone that we all can trust at the head of the FBI. These are normally investigations come from the FBI. They may be directed from the Department of Justice. Ultimate decision to indict comes from the Department of Justice. But uh, the one thing about special prosecutors, these things go on for years and years and years. So I'm not real uh, excited about them for any reason, even for something that I want to investigate, because... 
Um, you know, it depends on the personality. You get a personality of someone who wants to make a name for themselves, and it becomes more about them, uh, you know, enriching or making themselves famous than it comes about the truth. I don't know. I, I'm not real excited about a special prosecutor, but I do want to get to the bottom of it. And I've written the White House, and I've written both Intelligence Committee, and my understanding is I, – I, I thought I might be stonewalled at first, but my understanding is I will get an answer. Uh, there's something called a Gates notification that if any member of Congress is listened to, they're supposed to have a record. But apparently, they don't, if it happens, they don't volunteer it to you. You have to go looking and hunting and ask the right question to get it. Um, but to my mind, they shouldn't be listening at all. If a member of Congress, the, the examples I know were members of Congress talking to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, and that was from a couple years ago. Um, but member of Congress may have a different political position towards Israel than the president, and we shouldn't allow the president to, to listen in on those conversations. And I have a feeling that the Obama administration did politicize this stuff. I think I, I have no problem believing that Susan Rice was involved with unmasking people for political purposes. Mm. But to prove that, we need to get to the heart of the facts, and I'm all for pursuing it. But pursuing it not with a special prosecutor. By which process, Senator Paul? Well, I think that we do it through trying to get the information from the intelligence committees and from the White House. The good news is is that we're, it's not like we're asking a Hillary Clinton White House to investigate a President Obama White House. You have a White House right now where one of their people has already been destroyed by the intelligence community. I think they they have every the incentives line up for them to find the truth. Um, if you weren't able to do that and you were in control of Congress but not the White House, you might argue that the only way you'll find the truth is with an investigator. But really, Congress does have means of doing this. The, the members of the Intelligence Committee have enormous power if they're willing to use it in an investigation. And there are some good people on the committees, and I'm hoping that they will want to find the truth. And I think we have to try through those means before we go to any other step. Well, I hear you. And, and Senator Paul, you, of course, being targeted is such an embarrassment if it turns out that they were. I'd like to conclude your appearance on this show with one statement. The left was even screaming that Obama had created the largest surveillance state in the history of the world. That is what he did. Why is there no such outrage about that? That's the issue. Senator Paul, thank you so much. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.